April 7, 2001 Pay-per-view bouts featuring participants from the lower weight categories are rare, but the rivalry between Marco Antonio Barrera and Nassim Hamed was so popular with the public that HBO did not hesitate to put this fight on the air or sell it through pay-per-view. The price to view the fight was considerable for the time, at $40. 310,000 pay-per-view tickets were sold. As of 2020, the barrera Hamed fight remains the most successful pay-per-view featherweight bout. Nassim Hamed went into the fight as a confident favorite. Pre-match layouts were 3-1, to one, and in some cases even 4-1 to one in his favor. Barrera's guaranteed fee was $2 million. Hamed's guaranteed fee was $6 million. But in the end, he earned $8.5 million for the fight, which at the time made him the second highest paid boxer in Britain after Lennox Lewis. Hamed stated that he wanted to be remembered as the man who raised the bar for featherweight fees and also brought the same spark to boxing as Muhammad Ali did. Hamed's fights were truly spectacular, thanks to his athleticism and his showmanship. In the U.S., Hamed also quickly gained fans. His American debut in 1997 against Kevin Kelly lasted only four rounds, but in those four rounds, each of the boxers hit the floor three times. He defeated the bulk of the division's top fighters, including Puerto Rican boxing legend Wilfredo Vasquez. Of his 15 fights in the featherweight division, Hamed finished 13 by knockout. Therefore, most observers agreed that Nassim Hamed was the strongest boxer of this weight. Overall, the Briton had a 35-0 track record, of which 31 were KOs. Another interesting point with the pre-match dealings was that both boxers were 27 years old. But if Hamed was considered a fighter in his prime, then Marco Antonio Barrera, at the same age, was called a veteran. The Mexican made his professional debut at the age of 15, and by the age of 27 had 55 fights. The longest break he had ever had taken between fights was after he had two defeats in a row from Junior Jones. In the first fight, he lost by knockout, although a disqualification was recorded in the official result as Barrera's coach jumped into the ring before the referee could stop the fight. An interesting note, Nassim Hamed was present at the first Jones-Barrera fight, and if Barrera had won, then their match would have taken place back in 1997. In the second fight with Jones, Barrera lost on points and took what was a very long break for him, 10 months. Even in 2000, after his February war in the ring with Eric Morales, Barrera fought three more fights that same year, and after such a busy schedule, he went to fight Hamed just four months later. Marco Antonio Barrera was a classic Mexican boxer, and that style seriously let him down in those two fights against Junior Jones. But after these two setbacks, many noticed that Barrera's style began to change, and refined elements of classic boxing began to appear in him. In the eyes of the public, however, it still wasn't enough. An already pretty battered Mexican veteran versus a gifted British star with a heavy hit. Besides, Hamed's coach in this fight was Emmanuel Stewart. Many experts considered the fight easy money, both for Hamed and for the organizers. 28 out of 30 commentators predicted the victory of Nassim Hamed. Almost before the start of the fight, an unpleasant episode occurred for Barrera. When it was time to enter the ring, Marco Antonio was ready to leave the locker room. He was informed that Hamed had decided to retape his hands, and Barrera would have to wait. As a result, Barrera sat in the locker room for 30 minutes, not knowing when to enter the ring and how intensely to warm up. George Foreman, who commented on this fight, said that most likely Hamed did it on purpose in order to unsettle his opponent before entering the ring. However, in the first round, the left hook from Barrera unsettled Hamed himself. Nassim responded to the Mexican's attacks with a smile, and his smile was met with an accurate jab. This was one of those fights where the audience immediately knew that they had not wasted their money. They knew that an excellent fight awaited them. Big things were initially expected from Hamed, but as it turned out, the leading role in this performance was taken by his co-star.
major fighter to fighter. Briefly dazed him early in the round. Later came on to land those. Well, to give advice, he got to work on his own. Now he's got the round of clowning a little bit. That's what you want to get out there. Barrera refused to concede to his opponent in anything, and by the second round, passions began to heat up. Hamed went into the clinch, and Barrera moved Hamed to the ground. Hamed continued to hold Barrera by the neck. Barrera did not like the fact that he was viewed as a springboard to strengthen Hamed's status as a superstar in the United States. He did not like Hamed's arrogance, who had even tried to intentionally enter the ring in Barrera's corner and was blocked by the Mexican team. The episode mentioned earlier, with the delay in entering the ring, only added fuel to the fire. Barrera had been in this business for too long and knew perfectly well that his opponent had decided to play psychological games with him. In round three, Hamed looked a little better than in the previous two rounds and made some good attacks. Because of this, two out of three judges gave the round to him, although the decision was somewhat controversial. It might seem that the Briton began to find his rhythm, but Barrera took the fourth round without question. Barrera bringing the right hand out. One shot. Shooting the straight left down the middle. That's what Prince Nassim wants to do. Barrera goes to the body. Every round, Barrera should sit him to the ball. Very composed, Barrera. That was a hit, but there we see. Oh, second zone. Hands is gone. <clears throat> Big left hand by Prince Nassim. The fifth round was taken by Hamed, though the third minute turned out to be equal. However, in the end, Hamed landed a hard left hook and then a right hook to Barrera's torso. At the end of the sixth round, Hamed decided to play dirty, hitting the Mexican in the face with his forearm. Barrera responded and made him understand that he should not play those games. Before the start of the seventh round, Hamed's coach, Emmanuel Stewart, warned his boxer, not for the first time, that he was losing the fight, and if he continued in the same spirit, he would face the first defeat in his career. Hamed stepped up, but Barrera quite easily nullified Hamed's attacks with a fairly simple but effective technique. He would deliver a jab and then move to the left. Barrera constantly left the line of attack and it seems that all of Hamed's beautiful combination work was disabled by a simple tactic. Because of this, almost all of Hamed's attacks turned into single hits, which were read by Barrera quite easily. In the eighth round, Barrera continued to prove his skill at interpreting Hamed by anticipating his use of a traditional British tactic and countering it. Nassim holds his hands low, and after his attack, returns his hand to the same familiar position and not to his chin. Interestingly, the Mexican did not rush to attack, which speaks of a clear plan for the fight and a tactical endurance. The ninth round was developing relatively calmly, but towards the end, one of the most memorable moments of the fight took place when Hamed charged to attack, but ran into a sweeping left hook by Barrera. One problem with Hamed, he throws that big left hand when he misses. In the 10th round, Hamed tried to turn the tide of the fight and even succeeded in attacking, but he failed to wrest control from his opponent's hands. Hamed believed that he was facing a fight with an ordinary boxer who would attack immediately from the first seconds. And Barrera himself constantly repeated before the fight that he would attack without interruption. But that evening, Hamed was opposed by a concentrated and well-trained counterpuncher. In this fight, Barrera only had to wait 
for his opponent to come to him. In many fights before, it was obvious that Hamed makes many mistakes in the attack. For instance, he often attacks with his chin high. In fights with other rivals, he got away with it thanks to his speed, reaction time, and maneuverability. But this evening, he had a rival of a different level. Barrera made meticulous analysis of his own three defeats from Jones and his performance in his fight with Eric Morales. This, together with the desire to progress and hone skills, produced excellent results. The world was presented with a completely new Marco Antonio Barrera, which by his example showed that it is never too late to develop new abilities and improve yourself. And Nassim Ahmed had no approach to an opponent of this level of difficulty. In the 12th round, Hamed, knowing he was behind, swung wildly and missed Barrera, who in turn placed Hamed in a lock and slammed his head into the turnbuckle. It did not look like something emotional, but as an action with the expectation of finally finishing off the opponent from a psychological point of view. Considering Hamed's arrogant behavior before the fight and earlier in the ring, the audience accepted this episode with enthusiasm. But referee Joe Cortez deducted one point from Barrera, which was booed by the audience. Despite this, Barrera won the fight by unanimous decision and was awarded the championship featherweight title. Even before the official announcement of the decision, Hamed's coach, Emmanuel Stewart, approached Barrera and congratulated him on his victory. Before this fight, Nassim Hamed said that he did not consider Barrera the most serious rival in his career. And as a result, Barrera turned out not to be just the most serious rival, he turned out to be the one who ended Hamed's career. Under the contract, Nassim had the right to demand an act of revenge, but he did not use it and disappeared from sight for a whole year and then returned to the ring to fight an unknown boxer, for which he was booed by the public. This was the end of Nassim Hamed's professional career, but as for Barrera, his career took to new heights and he had several high-profile fights ahead of him, including a confrontation with Eric Morales, Manny Pacquiao, Juan Manuel Marquez, John Lee Tapaya, and Paul Anthony Ayala. Barrera retired 10 years after his fight with Ahmed in 2011 and began working as a commentator on Mexican television alongside Julio Cesar Chavez. In 2017, Marco Antonio Barrera was inducted into the International Boxing Hall of Fame. Please do not forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to our channel so you won't miss any new episodes about the boxing legends of the past. See you next time.